Welcome everybody. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. So when I do my demo, I don't expect you to be really following along. You're gonna be able to go on Monday, Chanel said, this will be up on YouTube and you can rewatch it uh, at your leisure and pause or rewind and, and all of that. Also, um, it, Chanel or Leslie will be posting a link to the actual tutorial um, in the chat. So you'll have uh, a copy you can look at digitally or you can print it out. It has step-by-step -step photos in it. This is a very, very basic, there we go, a basic project that's meant to show off the table cut beads that Michaels is stocking from the beadsmith. And I love these. Um, let's uh, switch over, spotlight my mat so we can get a close look and I'll take you through the materials and everything too. There we go. So table cut refers to a process where the beads are polished on both sides between two stones. So they have a, a thickness to them, an edge, um, and it gives them a nice substance without being heavy. The strands of table cuts are interspersed with other beads and accent beads. So a single strand can give you a lot of design opportunities. Um, I chose this one for the earrings that I'm gonna show you today. Um, besides, a single strand of table cuts, you just want to make sure when you pick a strand that you have pairs of things because it does help when your earrings, to make your earrings look more cohesive when you have the same beads or similar beads. So my earrings are, have, are going to have two of the same large bead and then an assortment of some of the accents that come with the strand. So when you look online or you're in Michaels, you can definitely find something. They come in tons of colors and themes, flowers, butterflies, moons, Dios de las Muertes, hearts, angels. There's some very holiday festive ones which are hiding under a pile of stuff, so I'm not gonna waste time. But besides the table cuts, you're gonna need a pair of ear wires, a bunch of ball and head pins, which I'm gonna be snipping the ends off of to use instead of bringing wire into it. So this is minimizing the supplies that you need. So you need table cuts, ball and head pins, something that won't fit through the holes in the beads, and end cones. And these beautiful little tulip cones are from Michaels. You can see that it's it's really nicely articulated and I just thought that added a, a lovely floral element to play off the graphics in the earring. Then you're gonna need two pairs of pliers um, just for convenience. I have pliers from uh, the Beadsmith tool set, the Ergo tool set, super fine because it's nice and dainty. So these have four tools, a uh, chain nose, a round nose, a flat nose, and a wire snip in them, and they come in a cute little case. So I'm gonna um, use a couple of these and let's get started. So the first thing that you wanna do is choose the beads that you're gonna use for, take these away, for your earrings. And like I said, I picked a strand that had at least two focal beads and then a nice assortment of pairs of other beads. So I have other little flat table cuts. I have some rounds. I have some really cute little um, bell flower shapes in this one. Um, and the variety is really endless. So I picked them out. Here we go. And the thing that makes these extra interesting is by having your dangles hang at different lengths. You can see that I have three different groupings and my matching earring that I'm going to put together is going to have the same beads um, but when it hangs they hang at different lengths coming from inside the end cone and that just makes them much more interesting 
and uh, displays the beads nicely. So I've picked my beads and I've strung them on three ball in head pins. Now you can use a regular head pin with a flat bottom, but the ball ends really are nice because they have little balls on the ends. So these are two inch, I think these are two inch head pins. So I've got these strong and now I'm going to stagger them so that they're gonna hang unevenly. And I'm going to trim the ends of the head pins to be even. So I'm just gonna hold them in my hand like this. And you can see that they're at, at different lengths. And I'm gonna take my wire snip and cover the ends with my fingers and snip these even. So now I have three even little ball end head pins. Okay, each one of these needs a very simple loop in it. So let's see, I'm going to take my round nose pliers and we do not have to do anything fancy here other than make a nice tight loop because this is gonna be hidden inside the tulip end cap. So I'm just going to take my round nose pliers and bring it around so that the end, let's see, can you see that? Yes. So it looks like here, I'll do it this way, like a little P, a little letter P or a musical note. And I'm gonna do that to all three of them. You wanna make them small because they have to fit inside the end cone. Okay, everybody got that? Are the cones a separate strand or are they findings? They're findings. These are sold by Michaels, they come in a pair, but you can probably find other kinds of end cones. Um, let's see, four different ones, ordered the beads, uh, ordering online is fine. I have to do that too, even though I have three Michaels near me. Sometimes it's just faster. <laughs> okay. Now. The next step is to wire these up through the end cone. And to do that, I'm going to take, remember I said I didn't want to bring another ingredient in. I didn't want to bring wire in. So I'm going to take one of the head pins and I'm going to snip the little ball end off. So the ball end is in this side of the flush cutter and I'm gonna make sure that I'm pointing it away from myself. So I'm left with a one little wire like this. Okay, now I have to capture the loops that I just made in these pins with this wire. So I'm gonna start a loop a little bigger there we go. But I'm not going to finish it because I'm going to string my dangles on. One, two, three. And then I'm going to take my pliers and finish up that loop and make sure that it's really closed. So there's my little dangle. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this up through the end cone. There it is, all hidden away. Now I've had these two other cool little beads that came on my strand, and I'm gonna put one next to the end cone. Then I'm gonna string my focal bead. And I'm going to put another bead, that little one, I'm going to hold it with the pliers so you can see. So there's the earring with the two extra little beads. So this is why it's important to choose strands that have a nice variety. Okay. Now I want to have my loop 
where the ear wire is attached, very close to the earring. So I'm gonna to have to kind of judge how much to bend this. And I'm gonna snip off a little bit. So I have about, I'm gonna say three eighths of an inch of wire. Snip that off. Again, you only need a simple loop. But this time, because it's showing, I'm gonna make sure to straighten it out a little bit and just make sure that it's really closed on there. So there's my loop. And the ear wires that I like to use, these fish hooks, I can actually open up with my fingers. It's pretty soft. And I'm gonna string my top loop onto the hook and close it. Any questions? That's it. <laughs> so easy and so fun. Um, oh, you're looking at my ring. Uh, I'll get to that. I mean, we do have time left, but here's my pair of earrings. Looks like I had a silver one on here and a gold ear wire on there. But I also have a pair that I'm wearing. I'll bring that out. You can see I used a slightly different accent bead and a different kind of an end cone. And I made my three dangles again from the beads themselves. Let me find that strand. Here's the strand. So I saw right away that it had these cool little tulip shapes on it and other little small beads. So you could really do some fun extra stuff if you want. And of course, if you have wire skills and you want to have longer dangles, you can add more beads to the dangles and do exactly the same thing by making the loops on the three, pulling them up through with just a single wire. This is a, a really, really good beginner. Get the feel for pliers and everything. And speaking of pliers, I do want to give a major shout out to these tools because they fit in my hands. I don't have to stretch my hand very wide to be able to control it. The ergo handles are really comfortable. For me, they sit right in the palm of my hand. I have probably smallish hands, but um, I know people with larger hands like these too. And of course the noses of the pliers are just wonderful in working with this kind of little small little more delicate kind of motions for your jewelry making. These four types of pliers are absolute essential basic must have if you're gonna make any kind of jewelry. They'll cover almost all your needs. Um, let's see. And if you so, like, yes, Leslie. If, there's a one question. Someone didn't see how you got the dangle, dangles inside of the cone. Ah, up up to the earring. So okay. So let's see. Um, what you do? Let me get some other loose beads out here and another cone. I'll show you. You saw that I had the dangles. I'll cut a a um. Just cutting some beads off here. So I'm going to make a dangle with a head pin, putting it through a bead or two. Here we go. All right, so you're gonna do this for each of the dangles and you're gonna make a small loop at the top like that. When you do three dangles or more, you wanna stagger the length of the pins so I might do my next dangle with just one blue one on it and I'm gonna snip it a little shorter. Always cover your wire when you snip it and I'll make another little loop. Okay, so now I have two. Now here comes the part that you asked about. Take another piece of wire or in this case a pin and you're gonna cut off the head or the ball. So you're left with just a piece of wire. Now you're gonna make a loop, but not close it all the way. 
because you're going to hook onto the loop, the open loop, you're going to hook on the dangle loops that you need right onto that wire. Whoops, I didn't keep it open. There we go. So whoever asked this question, is this making sense to you now? So you're gonna put the dangles on and you're gonna close up that loop. Okay, so you have these hanging like this. Now you're gonna take your end cone and you're gonna bring the stem of the wire that has the dangles on it up through the end cone and the end cone will hide the little loops. Got it? And then you're gonna put your focal beads on the main bead and you can add other accent beads and you'll make your loop and attach your ear wire. So I think that probably answered your question. Somebody was asking about a big necklace. That's another class. That will be on September 20th. You're talking about, can you bring it back to me to show me now, Chanel? There you go. Is this the one you saw the picture of? These are table cut dangles too. They're made in a very similar way with jump rings staggered along a strong strand of beads so they look really lush. And this has a bunch of strands that I picked that kind of complement each other. I think there's three different strands of table cut beads in this. Yeah, she's saying no, the picture on your thing, uh, on the the front the page, tutorial? that's not, that's just a strand, oh, that's, just that's not a necklace, right? That's just a right. strand. That's just yeah. showing the strands, it's not a necklace. I mean, there's no reason why you can't look at a strand of beads of the table cuts and like the way they're laid out. There's absolutely, that's fine. And all you have to do is restring them um, into another necklace. You can literally just restring this and attach it to a chain and you have a necklace or restring it and add a clasp to it and you have a bracelet. So there's a lot you can do with a single strand of these beauties. And they did a really good job, whoever designed how these go together. Some of the strands have more variety than others. Um, and they have more, you know, less or more, fewer or more of the accent beads. Okay, so that was the, that answered that question. And the tool set again, looks like this, the, everything I'm showing you, Michael sells. These are the super fine, the series, super fine series four piece. And like I said, the, it comes in a little zippered case, the four tools, and they just slide in like this. You can get a bunch of other things. You can bring your own peripheral things in. I'm a big tweezers user, so I'll do that. You can put little scissors in there or your scoopies, your bead scoopy. So we have a question Did about you your next class. My next class is the easy knotter. No. So that right? with the with no with the table cut. Let me let me ask, let me read you the question. Okay. It says, is the mix for the next class a mix or match of the same strands? So they're different strands in order strands. to have this many beads. Um there Yeah, but but is it the is it the same strand or is it or are the strands different? I think that's what she's asking you. Are you using three of the same strands? No, no, there's different strands. Different strands. Okay. Right. I think that's what she was asking you. Okay. okay. So I think this had three strands with one of the strands strands, no, three different strands in order to make this. And then I brought in the glass pearls and the seed beads. Um, and I believe the materials list should be up already online for this. Um, so uh, it'll tell you exactly what strands are in it, but there's three, there's one with leaves, one with flowers and one with the 
the bigger table cut, big flowers. See the nice edge to it? I have to say I'm very pleased with this one. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to, to showing you guys how to put it together. There's gonna to be a lot of design in that workshop. We're gonna talk about how to choose the beads kind of like I did for the earrings. And we'll get into that a little more when, when I teach that class. Uh, combo strand like those flowers from Jill could be Jill knows uh, table cuts. So it could be something like that. And, and she's I, a you know, Smith customer. She is a Beadsmith she's customer. She's a Beadsmith customer. Yeah. Yeah. So you have the list up. Excellent. So the the materials list for that necklace is up. Um, the if you've never seen these beads at Michael's before, it's because they're new. During Jewelry Week here, we love to present new things that are coming up, and we have what's called a reset where they bring in new products. Um, so there should be a wall. If you are lucky enough to have a local Michaels, there should be a wall of these strands for you to look at. So, you know, take your time, plan to spend some time looking at them and uh, keep these projects in mind. Uh, let's see. Um, can you buy them at their Beadsmith? You have to be a Beadsmith customer to buy directly from the Beadsmith. Beadsmith is a wholesale distributor. So you want to go to Michael's or go online to Michael's to find them. If you're a Beadsmith customer, that's a different story. But um, it's strictly wholesale to people like Michael's <laughs> and local bead shops. Uh, make sure the stores get the materials we do our best. We do our best, Fran. We really do try to make sure that everybody knows about these. But it's great to be able to introduce them here to make it with Michaels. Are there how many different strands of table cuts? Oh my gosh. Uh, dozens, dozens and dozens. It's a lot. And I don't know which ones may or may not have been chosen for the store that you're going to go to. But uh so they're displayed by color like a lot of things are michaels is very smart with their merchandising and you can go in and they have the black beads and the red beads and the gold beads and the silver beads and the green beads and they have them all sort of coordinated for you so you can try to mix and match um if they don't have them yet they will ask your local store for the beadsmith table cuts uh, antique copper, I'll preach, okay? Antique copper and antique brass, there's never enough for me either, Kim. So, um, and again, check with your stores. Tell them that you were in my workshop online for the Beadsmith table cuts and, uh, you know, the squeaky wheel, right? <laughs> so more is coming. All right, so there's more inventory coming, I'm being told. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, you know, this this Jewelry Week had a lot of buzz created, so people were into the stores. So if your store doesn't have them, go bug them about it. How do you search for them? Is there a product number? There's a lot of product numbers. They all have product numbers. Michael has Michael's has their product numbers. The Beadsmith product numbers are not anything that you need to, to know about. Um, if you're a Beadsmith customer, talk to your customer service or sales person about these. Um, these are not bead landing. These no. are Beadsmith, the table cuts. There are bead landing beads. And actually the necklace that I showed you uses peripheral beads from bead landing. So the crystal pearls are from bead landing and you, and you can find when I do the knotted workshop in a couple of weeks, you'll see more beads from bead landing. Again, when you go to this workshops page on michaels.com, there will be a list of materials with uh, information for you to be able to know what you're asking for or looking for in Michaels. I believe that's correct. Oh, they are bead landing? Okay, never mind. Really? I thought they were beadsmith. Yeah. Well, you could also search. And maybe under, some of them are uh, bead. The, 
Yeah. You could also search under check table cut. Yes, that's Please. correct. That might also pull it up. Right, right. And so they're available online now, these beads. Uh, are there other questions? You're welcome. I try to be clear. I mean, we were all beginners once. Somebody's thanking me, telling me they're a beginner. Um, Lori, that's we're what all I beginners. do, but Leslie and I do. We were all beginners once, and we're all beginners at something. So I'm a beater. I had to learn a lot about wire, like not just for this workshop, but way long time ago. Um, mixing brands is fun. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm here for the beadsmith, so I'm going to say, yeah, beadsmith stuff at Michael's. Woo All right. Well, big thanks to my partner in crime, Leslie, the other Leslie. We are Team Leslie from the Beadsmith. Thank you, Chanel, for being the moderator. And thanks, Melanie, for popping in and keeping me on track with information about stuff. Uh, and all you guys that tuned in from all over the country, I we really appreciate it. Stay hydrated, have fun. And if you make these, post them with the hashtag make it with Michaels. Uh, on the Michaels page, there's a place where you can share what you've made. We'd love to see it. Okay, and remember, if you came in late, it's okay because on Monday, this class, which is being recorded, is gonna appear on Michael's YouTube channel and you can look up the delish dangle earrings and watch everything all over again or finish up what you what you missed okay thanks everyone bye